In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh. And in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard him, heard of him, and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he has sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord.
We have uh, this, this morning in this Gospel according to St. John, uh, we are in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John, and so this will, will continue uh, in the, and it opens up into the beginning of the Bread of Life discourse, which is very, very important uh, uh, with respect to our faith uh, in the Lord and uh, the Eucharistic mystery. But in this encounter, um, our Lord, uh, it picks up after our Lord had multiplied the loaves and the fishes and, and the people were fed. Thousands of people were fed. It was a tremendous and great miracle. It's hard to know whether the people realized what a miracle it was or whether they just thought, well, they had bread and they gave it to us. It's hard to know. But, but what is clear is that um, they realized uh, that they had a good thing going and they could get a free meal. And uh, so they run after the Lord, anticipate where he's going. They're looking, they, they meet him at Capernaum, which is where our Lord was based for the three years of his public ministry. And, um, and uh, they, so they're looking for him and our Lord uh, engages. Uh, they, they first say to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? There to Capernaum, uh, which is, which is, opens way to a larger question. Um, uh, can be taken that way, but it can also be in terms of when did you arrive here today? But it could also, um, maybe the question should be, when did you get here in the sense of who he is in his humanity and in his divinity? He is the eternal word. Um, and I think that's something that we can take and use for our meditation and our prayer uh, on the Word of God, on the Gospels, on who Jesus is. Very, very important. Um, but then our Lord engages them and um, he, he kind of calls them out in a certain way, he, or at least he clarifies what their motives really are. I fed you and the, I fed you and now you want more. Um, uh, but he exhorts them, do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Um, and uh, so what happens here, I think, is sort of a three-tiered kind of um, leading that the Lord uh, is doing with the people. Um, they come to him with this, and their sides are set very low. Their sides are set just sort of on the horizontal, on the earthly. They're thinking about food for the day, and maybe a meal tomorrow, etc. cetera. Um, I think they're relating it to uh, God providing manna. Um, they think it's Moses, but God providing manna for the people of Israel in the desert in their pilgrimage of 40 years after they left the slavery to the Egyptians, crossed the Red Sea, and then on the way to the Promised Land. Uh, and and they're, they're thinking this is a continuation of that, just to keep them going on this earthly journey. Um, but, but there's more to it than that. They're setting their sights low. They're just thinking about that daily bread and whether or not they're gonna have to work for their meals, etc. cetera. And um, uh, so they say, what sign? can you do that we may believe in you? What can you do? Uh, and they, they quote the, the scriptures, he gave them food, food from heaven to eat. Um, and our Lord clarifies, it wasn't Moses that gave them bread from heaven, but his father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Um, and so they, they reveal, you know, this, this uh, still this very horizontal perspective. So they said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And then our Lord goes into the very first verse of the, of the bread of life discourse, mm -hmm. revealing, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Now, more time has to be spent on that in following this gospel passage through because it is so powerful and so profound. Um, and, and we will in subsequent Sunday or two. But because it's a, it's a drama, it's a relationship, uh, 
a faith that has to be uh, unfolded, if you will. And as we're reflecting on this, we are participating in these events. We are there in the scenes. We're the ones running up to, to catch Jesus for another meal and so forth. Um, so he speaks to them, they speak to him on this horizontal level. Then he, he engages them and he's starting to raise their perspective. And he's calling them to have a supernatural outlook on things and not merely a materialistic, worldly kind of outlook. And, and then uh, finally, when he reveals himself as the bread of life uh, and brings them to the gateway of the larger exposition on the bread of life, when he says, this is the bread that came down from heaven. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, etc. I don't want to go too much into that. That's for next week. But, but uh, he's leading them. He's shepherding them. He's, draw, he's drawing them and calling them out of their, um, their kind of tunnel vision. And he wants them to take their blinders off, their pre conceived notions so as to have their minds and hearts opened to the movement of God and the action of God. This requires a recollection. It requires having dispositions of faith. It requires striving for a supernatural outlook and not merely looking at the natural. Um, and, and these are the things um, uh, that were happening in our Lord's own day, and those things are happening in our own day as well. It's a part of the human condition. and Every generation has to come to know the Lord, to love Him, to serve Him, uh, to put their faith in Him, and to enter into the mystery of, uh, that, which entails surrendering oneself to God. Um, uh, so, so uh, through this, then, what St. Paul is saying in his letter to the Ephesians is, is so important. Um, you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self in your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires etc. And be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. Uh, so um, we, we um, recognize also uh, that in this giving of uh, the, the account from the book of Exodus uh, where the people grumble against Moses they think they're going to starve to death in the desert. And Moses petitions God, and the Lord provides them bread from heaven and quail for them to eat for meat. Um, it also reminds us of the, the grumblings of the people who, who then later, they, they grumble against God, and they, they say that this is, they get tired of it. They get tired of it day in and day out. Manna and quail, manna and quail. They get complaining. And they have this rebellious mind and heart, you know. Um, they forget to count their blessings and to recognize the, the importance of the intimacy of relationship between them and the Lord. The covenant, the covenant of being close with God and being humble and uh, of being grateful for the blessings. It is the, it is the, uh, the function of pride that leads one to a mentality of entitlement. And with God, friends, we're not entitled. <laughs> we're not entitled. We are blessed with an amazing, wondrous love, goodness, and generosity. Think about all of the accidentals in your life. I think, I've been thinking about this recently in my own life. Um, there's so many things that could be so different in our own lives. Um, yes, we have uh, various things that could be better, all right? That we didn't choose, it just came upon us by circumstance, etc., or by providence. Friends, in the, in the blessings as well as in the challenges of life, there is the working of the providence of God, great mystery. 
And the key is the way that we bear these things in loving faith and trust, in sincerity of heart. And we continue to walk with the Lord. We don't curse him when things are difficult. We pray to him and beg his help and support to enable us to have the light, to know how to act rightly, and to be disposed for the good things that he wants to bring about. And in the things that, in which we are blessed, how often do we stop and give thanks? How often do we stop and give thanks? For so many aspects of our life that are givens. That are givens. The fact that we're Catholic, what a great windfall is that, especially for those of us who were born into a Catholic family and baptized as infants. You know? Uh, what. You can't imagine a greater heritage than this. Um, and then the things like being born in the United States of America for so many of us. For those who uh, got here as quick as they could and could get here and have opportunity in life. And thinking about family and friends. Thinking about so many wondrous things that are part of our, and I'm just, I'm just, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? I think we need to spend some time reflecting on these things, being humble and grateful, and to recognize that all of these things come from the good God who is drawing us from sort of a horizontal or a having our sights set down low to an elevated perspective where we're looking up and looking around. And ultimately, he wants us to look up to see the one who was lifted up for us. Remember, the people grumbled against God, and he sent asps to sting them or bite them. And the people were dying from the asps, and Moses cried out to God on their behalf, petitioned God, and God had mercy, and he instructed Moses to fashion a serpent of bronze and mount it on a staff and to hold it up. And those who looked up and set their eyes on that serpent, then they were healed. They who had a terminal condition were restored and saved. Jesus is the one who was lifted up in the desert for us. And it all ties in with this bread of life discourse. And so, friends, as we go to this altar of God, in the context of life as we find it for ourselves in the here and now, with all the beautiful things and gifts and wondrous goodness of God, as well as with the challenges of life, let us never fail to give thanks. And let us, uh, uh, in, in the good things, let us make our offerings to the Lord of everything. Um, and in the things that are difficult, let us unite our cross with that of Jesus Christ here at the altar. Uh, that these things may be lifted up to God as an act of self-entrustment, entrustment of spouse and of family, children, and of the world in which we live that is in such need of the aid of God's grace. Um, and be uh, ready to experience the wonders of God's providential care. God bless you.
strive to be more aware of the needs of the whole human family. With confidence, we now bring those needs to the Father. That the church may boldly and faithfully point to Christ as the true bread and sustenance for every human need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. God of life, you provided for your people of old, and you remain faithful in providing for your people today. As you answer our prayers, grant that we may hunger above all for Jesus Christ, the living bread, who is Lord forever and ever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O, o Lord, we pray. <clears throat> and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O oh Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. sacrifices with the world, together with your servant, your Lord, your servant. 